<clears throat> I'm back. Good morning. <clears throat> well, it's morning for me. Um, it is 5.15 a.m. for me. So, I got 8 hours and 36 minutes of total sleep. <sighs> 1 hour, 20 minutes of deep sleep. It was like an hour, 40 minutes of light sleep. And I was only awake, I think, intermittently for about an hour. So, I'm feeling pretty fresh. Feeling pretty refreshed today. <clears throat> so when I feel good, of course, I give really, really uh, interesting lessons, I guess. Very interesting things come to me to talk about when I'm feeling really refreshed. So... Yeah, I got eight and a half hours of sleep. I fell asleep about f uh, five o'clock in the afternoon and and woke up at my usual 3 a.m. So regardless of when I go to bed, I always wake up at, at, at about three o'clock. So that's my time of, of uh, predilection and power, I suppose. <clears throat> so we have a few people that have joined us already. One doesn't count because she's upstairs, so... She could easily just come down and sit next to me if she wanted to. <clears throat> so I did want to start with a little bit of a myth buster. So this is something that I have seen a lot of, and I've been reading it uh, from time to time. And um, I think it's about time I addressed it. So, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and bust a myth real quick. So I've been I've been reading different different things on the Abraham uh Hicks Vortex group. I've read other things from other groups and now that I'm friends with a lot of new people, I get to see, you know, some of the interesting things that they post. And I keep again, I'm a scanner, right? Because I learned to speed read once upon a time. I scan now. So I don't always just lock in on, on individual words and sentences, I scan. And one of the things that I'm seeing is that people are under the impression that the law of attraction itself is, is like a tool, right? It's like a tool that you can either use or not use. And when you put it in your toolbox, it doesn't exist. So I see some people saying like, Oh, this law of attraction stuff does work, or or this, you know, really is a thing. Um, you know, I'm finally getting it to work for me. So I just want to bust a myth real fast. The law of attraction is always there. It's a, it's the way the universe changes. It's a it's a law of of the physical universe that we can either work with, or as as you know we know most people do work against the law of attraction and how the mind interacts with its environment, how the mind interacts with the physical universe, the mind and the body, and how we connect to our, our, our true self, our, our inner being, our, um, the aspect that, that some people may call, call the God self, you know, however you want to express it. It's, it's more close to the totality of who we really are, what we really are. So there are some that seem to be under the impression that the law of attraction is something that's abstract, that can either be invoked or tucked away at their convenience. And it's, that's, that's not how it works. Uh, I, I don't know any other, any other way to say it, that that's not, that's not how the law of attraction works. The law of attraction is always in motion. It's always working. Now, whether you're conscious of what you're attracting and what you're creating is a is a completely different story. Conscious creation is what we're all here to talk about. We're not here to just talk about creating because everybody is creating. That's how you know that the law of attraction is a law of the universe because you can't escape it. Every single human being on earth is creating. Every one of them. Some are creating misery. Some are creating love and passion and desire. Some are creating things, cars, uh, houses, financial abundance. But you're always creating, whether you know it or not. Maybe somebody is unconsciously creating ridiculous situations that they find themselves constantly trying to get out of. So the law of attraction is always working. 
that's my myth buster. It's always working. Like there's, there's nothing you can do to stop the law of attraction besides just not existing. In, in this human form, then you don't have the power of choice, then you don't have the power of conscious awareness anymore. At least not how we understand it currently. So that's my myth buster for the day, and then I'm going to move on to, to another topic. But the myth buster for the day is that the law of attraction is always working, always working for everybody. It's, it's, it's a law of how the universe fundamentally works. So you're either working with it, with conscious awareness, and volition, and choice, and power, or you're not. <laughs> and it's, or a combination of the two. Sometimes you're operating from a position of power, sometimes, you know, perhaps you're not. But the law of attraction is always there. The mind is always attracting, based on what it thinks about. That's, that's always happening. There's really, there's really no choice in the matter. Even a Buddhist monk who is sitting there perfectly still with a perfectly clear mind for hours and hours is attracting abundant peace. You know, they're creating peace in themselves and around them. So they can't avoid it. Not even, not even the monk who uh, for hours and hours can totally sit with, with no internal dialogue and sit in, in perfect meditative peace. They're creating peace. They're creating the stillness. So they're still creating. So no matter what, you are creating. So some of the posts that, that are talking about, you know, they, they're, they're, you know, this law of attraction stuff, you know, this, this law of attraction uh, abstract idea. So it's not abstract. I don't deal with the abstract. I deal with the physical universe. Okay, so we're talking about business, business and law of attraction. So uh, to set some um, context, I'm currently CEO of my own profitable company. Uh, I have a really great group of people behind me. We're making a lot of money. Some of the things that we do is we manage uh, startup businesses. So we're managing a restaurant or um, still in the process of managing two restaurants, essentially. We're helping one uh, you know, startup in, in the St. Louis area. Uh, I build and manage online presence for martial artists because there's so many high level martial artists out there. But these, these people, hi, <clears throat> powerhouse. That's right. So I'm, I'm managing, uh, you know, some of those projects because there's these old, you know, martial arts masters who've been studying for 40, 50 years. And they tend to be a little bit on the older side and they have absolutely no idea how to create online content they have no idea what how Facebook and Twitter can can help them with their schools it can help them build their schools it can help people uh, know more about them of course so you know these are some of the things that that my company is managing some of the projects that we're managing and you know I have been in a level of management or ownership for 20 some odd years now. So this, this game isn't new to me. You know, I've, I've been doing this for a long time. And there was a moment when I was like, you know, I've seen so many different management styles. I've seen so many different ways to run a business. And they're all kind of fishy to me. Like I don't, I didn't really like any of them at the time. So I had seen management styles where they would try to rule by fear. I know you guys have seen this before. Any anywhere you've ever worked, whether it's a hospital, whether it's a fast food restaurant, whether it's a Fortune 500 company, there's always somebody that wants to to rule by fear. So they want to uh, have a lot of rules in place. They tend to have a really cutthroat attitude when it comes to implementing rules and uh, you know, implementing a standard in, in their company. So there's, there's definitely that approach, the real cutthroat approach. You know, you get two warnings, the third one, you're fired. Um, no if, ands, or buts about it. You know, we rule with the iron fist. You know, that is definitely a business model that a lot of people, a lot of people follow. Hi, you're in the down under of Australia. I don't know what time it is there, but good, good day, good afternoon. So I'm talking about business. And we're talking about how to apply the principles of the law of attraction into our business and how we run our business. 
and how you interact with your business if it's not your business you know if you're if you're a, a member of management or you're just you know you're a member of the team you know there is a way to exist in a working environment that is conducive to the law of attraction that will help you either move up in the company will help you if you're if you're running a business it will help your business be more successful you will essentially attract the type of business that you desire so I had arrived at this because I had seen so many things not work. So you have the management style of the iron fist, but you also have the management style of I want to be everybody's friend. I know you guys have seen this before too. You have that manager who is in this weird middle ground, you know, when they're talking to their their uh the people who manage them, you know, they they exist in this in this particular way and then when they're around the crew you know and and the people that work for them they exist in a different way so they're kind of split right i know you've seen this management style you've seen this person or this manager or this owner who wants to be everybody's friend so i've seen that management style and i just i really got to thinking ah it's not too late or uh yeah, 8.28 p.m. I would be long asleep by then just because I wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning. But uh, I'm glad you made it uh, at 8, 8 p.m. in Australia. Oh, you're welcome, Amy. I'm glad you like the information. I know some of my topics really grab people's attention and then some will only grab a few people's attention. But it's really important to understand that the law of attraction is a law that is always accessible. It is, we're always attracting, you know, we're, we're always creating. So if you're in a business environment, you, many people are unconsciously creating. They're creating situations that create a lot of suffering, a lot of tension, a lot of frustration, a lot of anxiety, and there's a way out of that. So as a business owner, I started thinking like, how can we start to create an environment that follows these principles? The principle that I follow is one of relaxation. It's one of effortlessness and ease. And that's because it comes from my martial art, which is heavily influenced by Eastern traditions, Taoism, Confucianism, Buddhism. So, you know, that is some of where my background was coming from. And then also Native American traditions. I studied Native American traditions, Hopi, Navajo, Cherokee, in, in exquisite detail. And I've learned so much from understanding, well, not understanding, I can only understand so much, you know, but of learning about these ancient cultures and these ancient systems of belief. The law of attraction has existed. People have been working with the law of attraction before the words law of attraction were ever assembled. And of course, I mean, that's an obvious thing. It's the law. It's the way the universe works. So, of course, people have been working with it and playing with it and going with it since the dawn of time. Hi, Kate. So I'm just talking about, you know, business and either owning a business or existing in a business or a company while also working with the law of attraction rather than against it. So as a business owner, I saw all of these other management styles. And, you know, as a, as a, when you're in an ownership position, when you're in the position of ultimate authority in a company or a business, you you start to think, like, what are some ways... Yes, I will help you with the vacation feeling. Can you send me a private message? Because I, I want to remember that one. Because I've moved on from the vacation feeling to the retired feeling. So I, I no longer feel like I'm on vacation. I feel like I'm permanently retired. And that, that's despite doing work. Because it's, it's, it's an inner cultivation. It's my inner garden. I tend to it. I, I cultivate it. I prune it. So I'll explain that. It's a promise I will keep. But it's also something that's a little bit more in-depth. You know, it's not, it's not something that I can explain in just 10 minutes. But right now I'm talking about the law of attraction in terms of business, in terms of running your own business, in terms of existing within a business uh, the most successfully, you know, so that you can have the desire that you want from your job, from your career. Because the law of attraction is a principle that can be embodied. It's not something that, oh, I'm going to invoke the law of attraction to, to manifest this or to manifest that. It can be done that way, but I don't recommend it. I, I, I don't see the, uh, the long-term benefit of um, just focusing on branches of the tree. I focus on the totality of the tree itself, which includes the roots as well as the fruits, which is a great martial arts saying. Uh, 
uh, fruits and roots. But I digress. So what I want to talk about again is that we're 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 talking about business. So once I had I had evolved from manager to more of an ownership position, ultimate authority. I decided that I want to set the pace. I want to set the culture of the restaurant. I want to set uh, the management style. You know, all of the managers that I hire, all of the employees that I hire, I want them to fit a blueprint. So I keep talking about blueprints. And, you know, that's a reoccurring theme because I can see the blueprint and I can either work with it or work against it. If I work against it, I'm working against the way that the universe works because I have the power of choice. I can work against things just as easily as I can work with things. So I decided to start to run my business and, and I started to help people learn how to exist in a business as, you know, from an employee standpoint or a manager standpoint, how to be the most successful. And I never used the words law of attraction. I never used these words. I never, I never explained it in this exquisite detail that I'm explaining to you people because they weren't familiar with this at all anyway. So I didn't want to come off as, as somebody who was trying to reprogram or, or anything like that. So I slowly just revealed the principles and how to apply them without all of that background knowledge. So they never read any of the Abraham Hicks books and I never led them to the secret and I never led them to uh, the art of success by Napoleon Hill, who, by the way, was talking about law of attraction in, in the early 1920s uh, with some of the most, you know, financial giants of the American, uh, you know, industry. They built the American industry and they used the principles of law of attraction, uh, entanglement and uh, collective consciousness. So they were using these principles of the universe long before they were ever published in a book for you or I to read. So what I'm saying is that I, I started to approach business differently. And, and here's essentially how I did it. I started to apply the law of attraction. So first of all, I worked from the inside out. You know, that's the blueprint. If I want to attract or affect the outside world, I have to go inside. If I want to attract a soulmate, if I want to attract a lover, if I want to attract money, first I work on my own vibration. First I work on my own self. The perfection of self will equal the perfection of everything outside of us. So it's always working from the inside out. That's the blueprint. We, can, we can't avoid it. And also operating from the present moment. That's a part of the blueprint. You, you can't escape the present moment. Even if you're thinking about the past, worrying about the future, stuck in whatever unconscious cycle that we're stuck in, you're doing it now. You're doing it in the present moment, even if you're not consciously aware of it. And that's how you know it's a law. So the power of the present moment is a law of the universe, not just a principle. It's not relative. It's absolute. The present moment is always absolute. The law of attraction and how the mind attracts what it thinks about and how it feels is a law. It's, it's inescapable. So with business, I realized this and I'm like, why am I working against it? Maybe I can try working with the law of attraction. Maybe I can start working with other principles of the universe, such as the accumulation of skill. Balance is power. So I went inside myself and, and first I started to apply all of these things myself. I started working with more focus, more attention, more, more volation. So employees saw that, you know, I wasn't on my phone as much, that I was actually focusing on the task at hand because over the years I have developed an amazing razor sharp focus. I can focus in and lock in on one thing and that's the power of my attention. And from that I gain momentum and even more manifesting power. So what I did in my business is first I started working on myself and I led by example. So here's a principle. Here's a principle that you guys can work with. In your business, are you leading from a position of example? Or are you that coach that is, you know, trying to, to teach people, but you can't do any of it yourself and you've never done any of it yourself? That's an, that's an interesting thing. Hmm. What happens though when we start leading by example? We, we start to apply a, another principle. You cannot motivate another human being. You have absolutely no control over people. You can create the conditions of the illusion of control, which another person may follow right into your trap. 
But that's not real control because they always have the choice. They can awaken and just be like, I'm not going to follow your, your traps anymore. I'm going to be my own person and I'm going to go my own way. So that is definitely a principle that we can work with, that we cannot motivate other people, but we can instead inspire through our own action. So that's one really important thing, one really important principle of working with the law of attraction, that it's from the inside out. If we want our employees, if we want our managers to match our expectation, we have to demonstrate that, that meeting this expectation is possible. Does that resonate with you guys as, as managers or as employees? How many employees hate that manager that, that tells them what to do, but then goes and sits on their ass and, and drinks tea or watches TV or goes into the office and pretends to do work? You know, there's nothing worse than that. And as a parent, you know, as a, as a child, there's nothing worse than seeing your parent. Now, don't you smoke? <clears throat> it's bad for your health. You know, that's it's it's a double standard, and we feel that because that's not working with the principles of the universe. It's not working with what works, and we see that it fails. So, who can see something fail time and time again, and then make adjustments in their own life and their own way of thinking? Who can make those adjustments and changes? A very aware person can. And it, it's right. It's very unproductive for a person in a position of authority to you know, tell people to do as I say, but not as I do. So this is a principle that I follow. Whenever I get up and teach, if I'm teaching something, it's because I've applied it. I'm teaching it because I'm operating from that principle. I don't, I don't follow this idea that it's easier to teach other people than to work on myself. I don't, I don't believe in that. So everything that I want to teach, everything that I want to offer is something that I first have worked with and I embody. If I don't embody it, then I don't understand it. If I don't understand it, I have no business teaching it. So I'm never going to be that, that teacher that is do as I say, not as I do. So I was like, wow, this is a principle of how the law of attraction works. It's an aspect of the law of attraction that I can work with and I can make, I can make it work for me. And it will lead to everything else, financial abundance, freedom, uh, awareness in my company. And it led to all of those things. Where it was a profitable business. The restaurant that I'm speaking of, even before the, f the magical five-year mark, we were taking a profit. We were making money. We had the best employees, excuse me. We always manifested the best employees. The best employee would just walk right in at just the right time. The check for thousands of dollars would come in the mail at just the right time. We would get a, a, a break and the best opportunity for us at just the right time. It seemed like magic to some people, but it's not. It's working with rather than against. And we become the vortex from that. Once we're in alignment, we become a, a vortex of, of energy. Everything is, is coming into our, our field of perception and awareness. And we can see new opportunities. We can see all of the new things that we want to attract. We can see them coming into our alignment. And that is, that is the vortex. And again, Mythbuster, there is no abstract vortex. It's not like this tornado thing that you can walk in and out of. That's absurd. That is, that is misunderstanding what the vortex really is. The vortex is a state of alignment. It's a state of being. It is a, a form of supreme connectivity. And you become the vortex. You can pull other people into your connectivity. You can pull all of the things, attract all of the things. You open up and allow all of these things and all of these ideas and, and anything that you want on the emotional scale will just come to you because you've opened up to it. You're allowing it. These are the principles of the law of attraction. And I applied that in business. And, and as, I'm, as I'm giving this example, one of the things I started doing from the very beginning is I would work from the inside out. So I see something not getting done. Every single day I see that the dishwasher area isn't up to my expectations. So what does a manager or owner do if they're working in terms of the law of attraction? If they want to attract what it is that they want, they have to put themselves into alignment. You have to put yourself, your energy, your mind, your focus, your awareness, your attention into alignment of what you want. 
And the same is true for business. The same is true for school. The same is true for relationships. It's all the same. So I'm giving you some, some examples. I see the dishwasher area isn't up to my expectations. What do I do? How, how, do I, how do I do it? I visualize it, right? I find the feeling of how I want the dishwasher to be clean, and then I give them the example. I lead by example to motivate. I clean the shit out of that dishwasher area. Like, I, I just show them exactly how it's supposed to be very quietly. I work on their subconscious very quietly. I don't confront human beings directly by rule, typically, because I see the pattern. How many times have you ever seen two people confront each other directly and both of them walk away? Wow, what an enlightening conversation. I understand. I will follow your lead. I have learned much today. Or do people usually just walk away pissed? because they met each other with tension. They met each other with force and conflict. This is a pattern. Can, can you see it? When you see a pattern, do you adjust your own behavior? Do you adjust your own interaction with the, with the universe? I do. And it leads me to, to really wonderful things. So I have seen that confronting a human being directly typically just leads to tension. It leads to the other person tensing up, which leads to animosity, which leads to no productivity. So it doesn't work. So I don't do it. Instead, I lead by example. I clean the shit out of that dishwasher area. I made it brand new. And, and the employee sees that. And they're like, wow, I feel more comfortable when things are clean. You know, I like it better when things are clean. I can see how it's supposed to be done. And they may not do it right away, but then I'll show them again. And I'll show them again. And before you know it, they're just doing it. I've led by example. I've inspired to motivate. I've shown them the feeling that I have when the dishwasher area is clean, when things are organized. They can match their energetic vibration to my energetic vibration, and we can carry on in, in, in perfect unison, in synchronicity. That's just one example. That's the dishwasher area example. But do you see what I'm doing? Do you see the underlining thing that I'm doing. I'm recognizing patterns. I'm recognizing what works with the laws and, and principles and what doesn't. And I adjust myself accordingly. I act accordingly. I proceed accordingly. So what are some other things? You know, what are some other things that we're working on in business? We want to attract customers because we want to attract money, right? I mean, you want a business to be profitable. Hello? <laughs> I mean, that's, that's, that's a done deal, right? You know, of course. You want to be profitable. You want to be in the black. You want to be able to give your employees bonuses. You want to be able to give yourself bonuses. You want this business to result in your ultimate desires. But you have to stick with the principles. How about appreciation? How about when things aren't going according to plan? Do you still appreciate the fact that you own a business? The fact that you, you're taking the risk to, to do what you really want to do in life? Are you taking a moment to step back and say, wow, although today things are not going how they planned, I'm going to learn from it. I'm going to improve from it. But I'm really thankful for this lesson today. Like I really appreciate it. I would always proceed in my business with deep appreciation. I would walk in. I would see the sun shining through the windows. I would see the progress that we've made in retrospect. And I would feel really good from that. And I would talk to the employees about it. I was like, do you remember when I first came? How everything was terrible? The place was dirty? Do you, do you remember it? And they'd be like, yeah, Ernest, I remember that. And we would, we would raise each other's vibration by, by you know, the contrast of how amazing everything is right now. Leading by example. And this is true with the law of attraction. This is a fundamental aspect of the law of attraction because that's all you can really do. You cannot control other people. You can't. Stop trying. <laughs> I'm not ready to talk about control dramas because that may seem like I'm meeting tension with tension. There's some people who are not ready to learn about their own control dramas. 
just like there are some people who are not ready to learn about their attachments and how their attachments are causing deep suffering and how you can work with the law of attraction and not cling, not attach. You can have desires but not be trapped by your desires and that's how you can proceed from a place of effortlessness, how you can gain momentum and supreme uh, positions of power. Does that, make, does that make sense to everybody? How these principles are easily applicable to everything? And I love giving specific examples because if I can't give examples, I'm not a very good teacher. I'm just a talker. I'm just going to get up and, and essentially regurgitate books that have already been written. And I don't want to do that. I want to be a creative being. I want to pull from source so that I can continue to deliver information that is new and that is fresh and that maybe you've never even heard of before. So how about the law of attraction with, with um, employees? So any business definitely has issues with labor. Turnover ratio. You know, how often are you hiring new people? How can you adjust and apply the principles of law of attraction in how you hire individuals? Number one, visualize. What is my perfect employee? How about I be the perfect employee so I can find that feeling and show other people that feeling so we can find the feeling more often because that's a principle. That's something that you cannot subtract from the law of attraction. If you're visualizing and not finding feeling, you're wasting your time. You're focusing on lack. You can do all the visualization in the world that you want. If you are not invoking feeling, you're not working with vibration. You're not really working with, with the energy we want to work with. You're just stuck in your own little machinations. I have machinations, but I'm not stuck to them. I'm not attached to them. I don't cling to them. I allow them to be, and I don't try to control them, and I work with them, and I nurture them, and I watch it grow. It's a completely different approach. It's the relaxed way. Relaxed love. Relaxed management. Relaxed ownership. I proceed relaxed. If I feel tense, something's wrong. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not working correctly if I feel tension. If I feel anxiety, something isn't, I'm not working with the principle somehow. I've either forgotten to appreciate or I have forgotten to be aware and love. So I don't, I don't want to ever want to lose track of, of the principles in their totality that creates the law of attraction. That, that the principles are relative to us and our experience. But the law is a law. You either work with it or against it. So in terms of employees, a restaurant typically has a very high turnover rate. And when you start to get into quicker service, then you really get into a higher turnover rate because typically with quick service, it doesn't require a lot of culinary skill. So when you start to get into some of the higher end restaurants that require culinary skill, then you tend to value certain employees more. You know, you get that great cook, you can't really replace them as easily because what they're doing requires skill. That's not the same with, with an Applebee's. No offense to Applebee's. If you love Applebee's, continue to love Applebee's. I'm just sharing my opinion about it. When you start to simplify systems, you take away some of the skill. And when you take away some of the skill, now you can easily replace those positions. And when you can easily replace those positions, you, you start to appreciate the people less. So I went away from that. I started to include different areas of skill in all of their jobs so that everybody was accumulating skill. They were all working with the principles even though they didn't know it. I was introducing these principles to them even though they had no idea. I didn't need to explain it to them. I just needed to show them how to do it, and they saw the results from it, and they were able to work with it themselves. And now they're taking it into their new careers and their new businesses, and I get to see these young employees starting their own businesses. Do you have any idea how that feels for me? How it feels to see my, my employees and my managers and the staff grow into amazing, beautiful, well-rounded people because they're working with the law of attraction without ever using the words law of attraction? That's how I know I'm a teacher, because I can teach it in a variety of different ways to a variety of different minds. I'm not a coach. I'm not. I can help coach people. You know, I can help be that person that taps you on the shoulder and reminds you, you're getting away from the principles. 
Let's come on back. Let's bring it back to what works. But I am a teacher at heart. And that's what I'm here to do. And that's what I've been doing all along, even in terms of ownership, owning my own restaurant. I was a teacher. And a teacher leads by example. A good teacher does anyway. Well, Sharon, I don't know if I'm hiring currently. I do own a management group, so just drop me a line. Tell me what you're good at, and maybe I could find, find a, a good fit. I'm also starting up a lot of different businesses and helping other businesses start up, so uh, maybe I can help. I don't know. <laughs> but what I did with my own business is I led by example, applying the law of attraction, and with employees, you know, in this turnover rate. So I was like, wow. What can I do to affect my turnover rate in terms of the law of attraction? How can I use the principles of law of attraction? What, what would Abraham tell me? Well, I know that Abraham would tell me not to worry. That if I worry and I create a problem out of it, it's just going to perpetuate problem. It's just going to perpetuate worry. Now, that's easier said than done, but it can be done if you know that these laws and that these principles really work. There's a difference between just just maybe half-assed believing and, and absolutely knowing. In the matrix, that's the difference from being able to jump from that building to the next. You have to know you can, not just think you can, not just believe you can. You have to know that these principles in accordance with these laws will work. It has to work. It's the blueprint. It can't fail. It can't. So the first thing I started doing is I stopped worrying. I know that we'll always be fully staffed somehow. I know that if I apply the principles, everything will happen how it's supposed to. So I stopped worrying. And I started finding the feeling of the perfect employee. And I started to cultivate all of that in myself first. And then what do you know? Somebody would give their two weeks notice and the perfect employee would walk through the door. Hey, you know, I'm ready to work for you guys. I love eating here. The environment's really great. You know, I just want to be a part of it. And then the perfect employee would just walk through the door. It seems like magic to a lot of people. You know, my teacher who, who I worked with, who was a partner in the restaurant, you know, he was the number one owner. And he would tell me, he's like, Ernest, the universe has our back. Like, it just, it always is working out for us. When we need money, we get checks. <laughs> when we need more business, the restaurant right next door to us closes. When we need the perfect employee, they just walk through the door. When we need a good health inspection, we get the, the nicest guy who, who loves everything I talk about, and he overlooks a couple things. You know, I have a refrigerator that isn't, uh, a food service refrigerator. It's keeping shit cold. It's perfectly clean and acceptable, but it's it's just not it's just not licensed. It didn't have that sticker next to it. And of course the inspector should be taking it away from me. He should be, you know, condemning it right away. Oh, this doesn't have the sticker that you have to pay six hundred extra dollars for, by the way. It's a perfectly good refrigerator, keeping things perfectly cold, but you can't have it because it's not approved. Another system of control, by the way, so that you have to spend more money. But you know what? He let it go. He's like, I like you. I like this place. It feels good when I come in here. And you're doing a good job. Everything is really clean. So I'm not, I'm not going to be a stickler. Try to, get the, try to get it replaced. Get the right one. Spend the extra five or $600 and get the commercial freezer and refrigerator. But do you see that? Do you see? I didn't worry about it. I worked with the principles. I didn't, I didn't worry. I didn't allow that energy to take over. I trusted the universe. I trusted the law of attraction. I trusted and I knew that it would work out for me. And it always did. The company is profitable. The employees are happy. People are making money. You know, the employees are profiting so much as servers because we get great customers. We attract our customer base. We get customers that are loving, that want to give as a part of our pay it forward program. You know, so we had that pay it forward program was another manifestation. It was another way for us to trust the universe and show our trust and our knowing. 
So we put that program into place where customers could buy food items and they would buy food items for somebody that they never met and they would write it down on a heart, the food item, like one, one uh, pork sandwich, it's a barbecue restaurant, and they would put it up on the wall. And then somebody who was having a hard time would come in and they would redeem their sandwich and the restaurant would give them a drink or a side order and we were working together. So the customers were helping people. The, the people who needed help were coming in. And then when, later, you know, after they had recovered, they also came in and gave. They're like, you guys helped me out when my basement flooded and, and I lost everything. Everything was down there in my basement and, and I lost it all. And you guys gave me food for my family when I needed it. Now that I have everything back, I'm giving back. And it created this amazing perpetual cycle of giving, of loving. Sticking with the principles, embodying them in everything that we do. So I'm not ever going to be a teacher that just teaches aspects, that just teaches about the branches. I want to teach full embodiment. Full embodiment of the principles of balance is power, accumulation of skill, of we attract what we think about. That our emotional scale is a, a, a vibrational frequency that is tangible, that goes out to the universe and brings things back of similar vibration. These are laws and principles of how the universe works. And a long time ago, I started realizing this. And over the last six or seven years, I have fully started to embody it. I am about embodiment. Do you want to be the most powerful human being that you can possibly be in whatever way that manifests? You know, maybe you're really into sports. Maybe you're really into ownership. You own your own business. Maybe you're really into art and you want to be the best artist that you can be. I am the absolute best person that I can be in this moment. I'm loving. I'm caring. I'm open. I'm focused. I'm relaxed. I'm manifesting like a maniac. You know, things come to me way before I even know that I need them, before I even know that I wanted them. So I planned on being in Colorado, and I started to make these plans. I'm going to be there for two months, three months, and then I get these phone calls. And I have all of these amazing new business opportunities to make money for myself, to make money for other people so that I can teach more. You know, I had all of these new business deals just fall in my lap, and now I'm going to Florida. I'm going to be in Florida for a few weeks. I didn't even know I wanted that. I didn't even really know that I wanted all of these business deals to, to manifest because it helps everybody around me just as much as it helps myself. And now that it's manifested and it's in my lap, I'm like, oh, this is good. This is what I needed. This is awesome. Thank you, universe. I'm thanking myself. So the, 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 the idea of law of attraction is not abstract. So you don't, you don't, uh, hey, this, this law of attraction stuff works or doesn't work. It, it's always working. Whether it's for you or against you is your choice. If you want the law of attraction to work for you, well, then you better start applying the principles. You better start working with it rather than against it. I can help you with that. I'm doing tons and tons of stuff for free. And, and the fact that I'm willing to do all of this for free should show something. Now, I'm not going to tell you what it is, but again, I'm trying to lead by example. I want to be a leader. I want, I want people to see that this is possible. So I'm offering four different classes for free. One is about business and, and financial abundance. I always have money. I've never, I've never really had a moment where I, I felt that, you know, it wasn't going to work out. I don't feel that way. I work with these principles in every aspect of my life. When I'm hungry, I allow food to come into my awareness. <laughs> you know, when I'm horny, okay, I'll skip that one. Just just to stay on, on, on topic, I'll skip that one. When I want love, I, I, turn, I tune my frequency into deep appreciation and love in the moment. It's not abstract. Love is not abstract. The law of attraction is not abstract. So I hope, I hope everybody here can learn to work with the principles. Figure out how these principles can work in your life. So the free classes are on my website. You can go to ErnestKrolik.com. I made it very simple. It's just my name.com. I'm not being egoic. I just want things easy to remember. 
So you go to my website, ErnestKrolick.com, you go to classes, and every single one of those classes are free. So you don't even have to, you know, which one's free, which one costs. They're all free. My classes are free. I love moments of silence, moments of space. That's another principle. All creativity comes from a place of, of supreme peace. The space of no mind, as the Chinese would, would put it. Checking in, as Abraham would put it. You check into your experience, otherwise how can you make adjustments? How do you know what you're attracting if you can't evaluate your own emotional and energetic scale? You have to check in, which is why mindfulness is the base, and that's why I offer that class. And I know that if people want money, if they want you know, these items, well then they need a way to find it. They need a way to attract it. They, they really want to understand. Uh, so the website is just my name, ErnestKrolick.com. Just go to classes, click on classes, it's all there for free. Yes, Diana, it, it, it all happens at the right time. It all happens just how, how it should. As long as we're in alignment, you know, things will work out for us. But what does it mean to be in alignment? I'm trying to give you guys the physical example of what supreme ultimate alignment means. I'm, I'm not oscillating in and out of alignment. I'm not. I am in a permanent place of, of supreme authority in my own experience. I am the captain of my ship, and I'm never going to relinquish command. I'm giving the example of how this is done, and I don't oscillate. I'm, 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 I don't go from the high-flying high disc to, to rock bottom like a lot of people do. So, Andrea, one interesting thing is that there is really no such thing as bad or good. There's not. Good and bad is something that we assign. We, we place mental assignments to what we want to be good or bad. Your brain fundamentally works in binary. Synaptic connection is either connecting or not connecting. You're either firing or not firing. It's binary. It's one and negative one plus and minus. That's how the brain works. And I understand that. And I work with that principle as well. So when you see something and you want to immediately define it as good or bad, that's not, that's not really following the blueprint. Contrast isn't bad. It's showing you what you want. It's showing you what you need. It's showing you where you are. It's a tool. It's useful. Very, 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 very useful. So when you think something that is bad, that's just your mind identification. It's just your association that you're placing on it. You see something, it's not immediately what you think you want, and you, and you place bad. Uh, so my name is, is I'll, I'll, I'll put a link to it after uh, the Facebook Live too. Uh, in fact, I've, I've put links all over uh, the Abraham Hicks group. I was told not to advertise. Uh, but since it's free, it's not really advertisement. I just want people to be, uh, yes, thank you, Shana. ErnestKrolick.com, and then it could be uh, uh, slash classes. You can just hit classes, and it will take you to my Elegant Crane page, which is where all of the um, booking and everything happens. So I set it in central time zone because that's where I am. So when you go to sign up, just adjust it to your time zone. Make sure you click on the time and then and then click, you know, book it. And it's free. It won't it won't ask for your credit card number. Uh, but just keep in mind that these classes are filling up pretty quickly. So there's already one that's 15 out of 15. Um, but I'm offering them, you know, often and I'll continue to offer them. So uh, just stay tuned. You know, I want you to stay tuned with me. I want you to keep tuning in to what Ernest has to offer um, because I'm a teacher and I'm here to teach how to embody. Let that word stick with you. What is embodiment? So I practice a martial art. I don't just practice it for an hour a day. I don't just practice it sometimes. I practice it all the time. I embody the principles of my martial art. I embody the principles of law of attraction. I embody the principle of balance is power. I embody the principle of accumulation is, is, is how we gain skill. 
So it's visible in every aspect of my life. I am the example that I'm setting for, for everybody. And I'm writing a book because I want this book to be free in the library for all. I'll make a little money from it and I'll use that money to help people. I'll help them start up businesses. I'll use that money to invest, which is what I'm using my money for now. I'm investing in some way or another. I'm investing either in somebody else or in myself. I'll make, I, I make a great investor. I invest in people. And I see what people are creating, even if they don't. Uh, I practice northern style praying mantis which looks a little bit like this, you know, uh, Mantis. And I also practice Chen style Tai Chi Chuen. So for the past six years, I've had private instructor in Tai Chi Chuen. So this is uh, the uh, full totality of the martial art Tai Chi. Um, it is not Tai Chi for health. It is not Tai Chi for um, senior citizens. It is the full explosive embodiment of Chen style martial art. And uh, my teacher is uh, from China. He is Chinese, and I've been so fortunate to have attracted uh, a teacher that gives me private lessons, and I, I've, I, don't, I don't pay. I pay him in other ways. You know, running his business, for example, was a great example of that. Uh, and I'm also building his website. I'm building his online content. I'm building his local school. I'm building a concierge service for him to help uh, essentially escort new students, Chinese foreign students who don't understand the area. And I take a percentage. <laughs> That's what a management group does. Uh, but my martial art, you know, is is Chinese kung fu. I don't I don't practice other other types because I I, I want to perfect my craft. So I practice again as a teacher of, of of Chinese martial arts. I believe I must embody it. How can I teach another person to practice if I don't practice? What kind of sense does that make? <laughs> what kind of teacher am I? So I'm not that life coach that gets up in front of you and, and tells you how to do things. <clears throat> and then upon closer examination, I'm not doing them myself. I believe in transparency, authenticity and authority through transparency. Ask me anything. Ask me about my life. Ask me about my romantic relationships. I'll tell you the truth. I'll tell you where I'm at. I'll tell you how I'm manifesting. I am an open book. I am the I am, and you guys can know all about me. I don't mind. I believe in transparency. Because I don't, I don't want to hide anything. I don't, I don't, uh, Bruce Lee, yes. Bruce Lee is, is pulling from a Taoist philosophy when he talks about water. Uh, so the water coursed way comes from items like the Tao Te Ching, and it comes from the, you know, the Tao Te Ching and, and the I Ching, which is the Chinese book of changes. It always talks about water and the flow of water and how water goes around and under and over an object and dissolves it over time. This is called the accumulation principle. One by one, it, it can turn the, the largest stone into dust. Second by second, it turns into centuries. And then you have the Grand Canyon that was carved by the Colorado River. You can see these principles inside and outside of the human experience. That's how you know what I'm talking about has legitimacy. It's, it's true shit because you can see it inside and outside. I can give you tons of examples. I am never going to regurgitate somebody else's book. I am never going to regurgitate somebody else's words unless it's to help clarify in some way. I am not here to walk in the footprints of the ancient masters. I am a dragon in my own right. I will write my book. I will talk to people who find value. Uh, I'll be heading to the panhandle of Florida. Um, my aunt lives in Florida. She has a complete extra room for me. Um, and I'm going to go there. I'm going to relax by the beach. I'm going to write my book. I'm going to continue to give the free classes. Um, I'm working with people one-on-one -on -one who want to get better at, at, at manifesting in their life. So for one-on-one -on -one stuff, I do, I do charge because my time is valuable. Um, I want to make at least minimum wage for any hourly or, or uh, you know, hour and a half time that I spend with somebody. I think that's common sense, right? Um, but with these classes, I can get a bunch of people together and I, can, and I can help a lot of people at once. And I can give a lot of people information. And the great thing with this class is it's not like Facebook Live. You guys can ask me questions in real time. 
You can say, hey, Ernest, can you clarify this point? And I'll clarify it right then and there. You can see me. I can see you. We can interact with each other 100%. And that's beautiful. I used to not really care for technology. I was one of the last of my friends to really start a Facebook and get active with Facebook. It's just not something I really care about. I have no problem with it. You know, I'm not against it. But at the same time, I just wasn't really interested. But now I see technology is an amazing teaching tool. I can help people. I can help people and I can help myself and I can help everybody around me and I can be a positive agent of change. And that's what I believe in. And I, in the, and I am the embodiment of that. You see it in everything I do. I was walking to work for a very long time because I wanted to save gas. I believe in that, so I do it. I don't care what you do. I can't care too much about what you do because then that's getting away from the principles. Now I'm trying to exist in your reality, which is insane, by the way. <laughs> Existing in somebody else's reality in their mind is insane because you can't. You can't do it. You never really know what somebody's thinking. So I don't try. So did, I hope that helps with business. You know, we were talking about uh, how to attract the perfect employee. Trust. Trust the universe. Trust the system. Embody what it is that you want to create. Create the conditions for success. That's, that's what law of attraction is doing. You're, you're allowing it to happen. If you're using force, if you're, if you're trying to push, 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 then you're not allowing there's a difference, a fundamental difference of energy and tension. If you try to punch somebody, you will get punched. If you're afraid of getting punched, you will get punched. However, when the door of opportunity opens, just walk through it. So that's from martial arts, and that's a little bit of combat <laughs> talk. So for people who, who don't like a... Like a combat type things, then please ignore that analogy. But again, it's an example that works inside and outside of the human experience. If I'm sparring and my mind is 100% on trying to punch, I'm going to make a mistake because I'm forcing it. I'm not going with the flow of the interaction between me and the other person. So if I try to force punches, I'm going to get punched. If I try to avoid punches, I'm going to get punched. I'm attracting what it is I don't want because that's my focus. If I'm afraid of it, if I'm generating fear of getting punched, I'm going to get clobbered because I'm attracting what I don't want. However, if I focus on my balance, if I focus on my energy, if I focus on my state of being, being calm, being aware, all I have to do is wait for the door. When the door opens, I just walk through which e equals me punching somebody else in, in a sparring environment. It's all for fun, don't worry. All right, so that's, that's pretty much what I have. If you want to learn more, please come to the class. Uh, I can address very specific things in running a business. Contracts, distribution, finding the right distributor, legality, taxes, um, staffing, how to run an effective employee meeting, how to run an effective management meeting. As an employee, how do you move up? You know, what is the best way to advance in your company? I can help with all of those things because I can, I can give you examples of where I've done it. I can show you examples of where other people have done it. And I can explain how they're following the principles because it's how it works every single time. So hopefully sometime today, just check in. Take a deep breath. Remember who you are. Remember what the law of attraction really is. It's not something that you can just half-ass approach sometimes. The law of attraction is always there. It's the way the universe moves. You can't escape it. Just like you can't escape the present moment. You're always in it. Whether you're aware of it or not. Whether you're conscious of it or not. That's debatable, right? You tell me. The law of attraction is always there. You're always attracting. Whether it's misery, confusion, frustration, the abundance of shit, or the other, you know, the other options. But that would be working with it. That would be awareness. 
that would be consciously creating? Do you think that the 1% of the United States are all conscious creators? Do you think the person who just won the lottery is a conscious creator? Maybe. How many people win the lottery and end up losing all of their money? How many people win the lottery and end up committing suicide? How many people win the lottery and have absolutely no idea how to handle that type of abundance? Because they're not working with the blueprint in its entirety. They are not embodying the law of attraction. There is a difference. So I hope you can learn to work with rather than against what is already in motion. So it's not like the law of attraction is only for some people. It's for everybody, no matter what. You're stuck in the law of attraction because you have a mind. You will attract where your mind goes and where your energy and where your feeling goes. You I mean, there's nothing else I can say about that. <laughs> there's, there's, I can show you how to work with it, but that doesn't, I can't make it any more or less true for your experience. So when you hear somebody saying, you know, uh, this stuff really works. Do you really understand the law of attraction? Do you really understand that it's always working? It's just not always working in your favor because you don't understand how. And when I say you, I'm not talking to anybody specifically. It's just this general you, you know. Thank you, Lisa, for tuning in. Thank you, Sharon, for tuning in. Thank you, Aaron and Teresa and everybody I see in the chat. I appreciate you guys. My appreciation for you is not abstract. I don't believe in the abstract. I don't practice the abstract. The law of attraction is not abstract. Love is not abstract. Power is not abstract. Authenticity is not abstract. None of this is abstract. So I, I, hope, I hope this is clear. If it's not, drop me more questions because this is really inspiring me to, to, to say more and to share more with specificity because now I see specifically what some people are, are wanting to know. I'm a teacher. I'll help you learn what you want to know. That's what I'm here to do. I am not a coach. So again, thank you guys for tuning in. I really appreciate you. My appreciation for you is very visceral. That's why you're getting four free classes a week. <laughs> because my appreciation is legit. It's tangible. It's visceral. You can connect to it. That's how you know it's real. So just ask yourself, the next time somebody is, is, is preaching from a soapbox, the next time somebody is trying to convince you that they have a mastery over the law of attraction, listen to their wording. Listen to what they're saying. Do they really embody it? Do they really understand it? You can evaluate that. You can see that. You can feel that on a very basic level. All right, so I'm going to get out of here. Have an exciting day before me. Tomorrow I, I drive off to Florida. Lisa, mindfulness. In one, one word. So when you're stuck in the storm, first of all, you have to change your language because the word stuck isn't true. You're never really stuck. It may seem that way because of the associations that you put, the, the, the labels that you put. So changing your language is very powerful because language is just a description of reality, right? So anytime we're using a word, we're just describing. Every time we use a number, we're just trying to describe the patterns of geometry. We're trying to describe the patterns of the universe using mathematical numbers. It's a language. So first of all, change your words. You're not stuck. You just haven't figured out how to get out yet, right? So Lisa, don't say that you're stuck, please. Say, when I haven't quite figured out how to get out of the storm, how do I keep my thoughts all good? And one way is learning to check in all throughout the day. It's not, it's not just checking in when you realize you're in the storm. It's checking in all the time so that when you realize you're in the storm, it's easy peasy, punk and easy. And you gain momentum. And you gain energy and you gain power. 
So checking into your experience is a fundamental teaching of Abraham. And I like to call it mindfulness because people are very familiar with that term. Mindfulness is checking in. It's going from unconsciousness to consciousness, from autopilot to aware pilot. And if we're flying at 30,000 feet, I want an aware pilot. So learn to check in. And I can teach that through my mindfulness class. Hey there. <laughs> I got another plug-in. I'm plugging things that are free, so that should be easy, right? So you learn to check into your experience all throughout the day, and you learn to embody this technique of checking in. And then before you know it, you end up like me, and you don't check out. I don't need to check in. Right now, I have a percentage of body awareness on my toes. The toe that is touching the ground with my big toe, I'm, I'm, I'm grasping it, and that comes from my kung fu. That's a, that's a kung fu thingy. So when you're, when you're in a, a particular stance, your big toe lightly grasps the ground. And it's, a, it's just a way for you to connect to the ground and not have your weight on your heels. Because if your weight is on your heels, you have no balance. If you have no balance, you have no power. And you can't accumulate the energy necessary to defeat your opponent. Hey, that's weird. These principles are working in a physical sense. Who knew? Who knew that the principles of law of attraction are both metaphysical and physical? That's how you know it's a law. A principle is only metaphysical, but it's something that we can work with nonetheless. So learn to check in. Check into your experience as often as you can and, and learn to be aware. You're not trying to change. You're not trying to control. You don't have to do that. However, if you're existing in any type of self-doubt, any type of self-debilitating mentality, you got to change that as quick as possible. That's, that's a ship who just hit an iceberg, and it's going to sink really, really fast if, you, if you're thinking negatively on yourself. So if you're like, oh, I can't do this. This is too hard. I'm terrible. Stop that immediately. Like, that's one of the few things I will stay, say that. Fucking stop. Like, that's when we need the power of positive thinking, because we cannot exist in self-debilitation. Because you're, you're killing yourself. You're cutting off your own energy. You're, you're a sinking ship at that point, and that hole will get bigger and bigger, and you'll sink faster and faster, which is where the power of positive thinking comes in, because you can counter that directly. So by first checking in, you can evaluate your emotional scale. If, if, if you're feeling an emotion that is debilitating, you can flip that around simply by playing with your awareness and tricks of attention. I don't do that because I don't need to. I am not a positive thinker. Boom, I said it. And some people will be like, oh, that, that's not the teachings of Abraham. You have to think positively. No, I don't. I don't need to think positively because I'm not thinking negatively. I'm existing in abundance and allowing and I'm present, and I'm aware, and I'm powerful. So I don't need to think either way. It's in ask and it is given. It says that any type of thinking, internal dialogue and words will ultimately lower your vibration. However, thinking positively is much better than thinking negatively. So there's a use. Thinking positive is a tool. And it's not a tool I need to invoke as much anymore. Sometimes maybe. So I'm not, I, haven't, I haven't thrown that tool away. <laughs> I may need to use that tool someday. But I don't oscillate. I have peace. And my underlining peace brings me clarity. And from that clarity, I can see contrast as being beneficial. I can see the silver lining of everything. My perspective has fundamentally changed. Okay. So I'm going to peace out for real this time. So I hope you guys sign up for my classes. Uh, I hope it's beneficial to you. Um, I want as many people in the class as possible. That way I can reach as many people at the same time as possible. I'm all about efficiency, uh, path with the least resistance. It's not always easy, but it's easier than the alternative. I'll post the website again, but it's just my name.com, Ernest, E-R-N-E-S-T, no space, K-R-O-L-I-C-K.com. Click on classes. I also offer one-on-one -on -one coaching. That's something that I do, I do charge for because that's my personal time. 
you know, that's one-on-one -on -one time. And when teaching a martial art, you typically don't get one-on-one -on -one time with your teacher uh, for free. That's just not, that's just not how things work. Um, so I'm sticking to that. Uh, I don't want to devalue other people's services by offering one-on-one -on -one stuff, you know, completely for free. But it's also dirt cheap. And I don't care if anybody signs up or doesn't sign up. I offer it. I'm available. Uh, it's really not that, you know, consequential to me. Um, I'm already doing it, so, you know, I'm already manifesting my desire, and that's to help people one-on-one. -on -one. But I'm not pushing it. You know, I'm not forcing it on anybody. Take it or leave it. It's available. And the sage makes themselves available without prescribing uh, behavior that's unwanted, that was unasked for. So if you notice when I talk, very, very rarely do I prescribe behavior. You know, I'll say what works, what I've done, how it works, but typically I avoid prescribing direct behavior. Um, and, unless you ask, in which case I'm available. That's from the Tao Te Ching also. The sage makes themselves available. The sage places themselves below the people so that they're always there to help lift them up. All right, so I'm going to holler back, and I'll see you guys next time. Uh, I'm going to try to do one Facebook Live uh, a day, or, you know, I might skip a day, but you'll have several from me a week. Um, I'm doing them on my own uh, Facebook page and my own Facebook group. If you want to know more about my Facebook group, you have to uh, directly contact me. Um, I won't advertise it here. So it remains a mystery. I like mystery. I find it very intriguing. So a lot of my life remains mysterious because I like it. I enjoy it. I thrive off of it. Okay, so finally, after, after f no further ado, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll catch you guys later. All right, so I love you guys. Namaste, I really appreciate you. I hope you can feel the love coming from me because it's tangible and it's real and it's authentic. So I hope you guys can feel into it. And someday I hope all of these teachings can be taught again and again and again. And we can achieve the society that I believe in. One that is loving. One that is uplifting. Uh, one that is, is purposeful and driven and powerful. I want it for everybody because it's the only way to live. It's the only way to fly. Free. Alright, I'll catch you guys next time.